The Perry Glass Studio is uh, an educational tool of the Chrysler Museum of Art, and we opened our doors to the public uh, in November of 2011. So what we do is we introduce the public to glass making processes that they might find represented in the collection across the street. What we do at the Perry Glass Studio is we try to support glass artists at every stage of their career from their very first taste of glass making. If people want to continue making glass, they can uh, continue with higher level classes and then they can even rent the equipment and stay here uh, to, to start a new hobby or maybe a new career. Glass making or glass blowing especially is a process that requires a lot of heat. And glass actually comes from silica, soda, ash, and lime. We put those three ingredients into our furnace and we turn it up to about 2300 degrees Fahrenheit and it turns into liquid clear glass. It's pretty miraculous how that happens. So the furnace is full of molten clear glass in our studio and it's always hot. So the glass artist approaches the furnace with a long metal tube called a blowpipe and they remove molten glass from the furnace. So at this point it's a liquid and it's wanting to drip off the end of the, the blowpipe. And the whole time they're working the glass, they're constantly turning and rotating to keep the glass from dripping off. They might add color. So one way that we add color is to take crushed up colored glass and roll the particles through. And that purple glass is gonna stick to the surface. The final product will appear to be made of purple glass, but it will actually be made mostly of clear glass, which is that thin layer of purple on the surface. And then the, the blowing and the shaping starts to, to, to take place. So a bubble is initiated into the glass. Um, when the glass first comes out of the furnace, it is like runny honey. It is it's kind of gooey and honey-like. Uh, the longer it stays out of the furnace, it solidifies, and pretty quickly it'll go from honey to ice. You know, it really kind of freezes up. So once the glass is um, starts to be shaped, we use metal tools, um, various um, wooden and metal tools, to shape it, to expand it, to We'll use gravity to stretch it, so on and so forth, depending on the shape that we're going for. On a piece of blown glass, so for instance, if you're making a vessel, um, you blow a bubble, you shape the bubble, and then you have to transfer from your initial blowpipe to a secondary rod, which is called the punty. And this is a solid rod with a little bit of glass on the end. You make an attachment on the bottom. You remove it from the initial blowpipe, which leaves an opening or a hole that you can then heat up and flare to its final shape. Um, so it could be the, the lip of a drinking vessel or the edge of the vase, um, and that gives it its final shape. Once the piece is finished, it has to cool slowly, otherwise it will crack. So the entire time we're working on the glass, it never gets below 900 degrees Fahrenheit. We're constantly going back to the heat source to keep it moving and malleable. And then at the end of the process, we remove it from the final connection, place it into an electric kiln where it sits at 950 degrees, and then very co slowly cools down to room temperature relieving the stress and keeping it from cracking. One of the programs we do, classes, generally the public classes take place on weekday evenings or on the weekend. And then during the rest of the week, we're running our partner programs with colleges, as well as an after-school program with the Boys and Girls Club of Southeast Virginia. We have a new program that's gonna be starting up with Teens with a Purpose. Um, again, trying to kind of reach all the points of the community we can and, and offer opportunities for people to work with glass because it's a really fun and rewarding process and um, a lot of people, myself included, once you start working with it, you kind of can't stop. The assistantship program um, is a very special program. It is a program designed for glass artists who recently received a Bachelor of Fine Arts in Glass or have an equivalent amount of experience and we have people come from around the world to attend. Um, we typically have eight studio assistants at a time and they spend their time helping us maintain the studio, helping us run the studio, as well as making their work. So they get a lot of hands-on um, instruction, but also a lot of time to work on their work and develop as artists. The Visiting Artist Series is something that takes place usually about two or three times a year here. And this is where we're bringing in world-renowned glass artists to demonstrate for the public and to work with our studio team. They generally work three days in the hot glass studio, um, narrating or we narrate for them. They give a lecture while they're here. Oftentimes these artists are represented in the collection across the street, so viewers can go right across the street and see their work on view in the museum. Um, and it's a really great time. So safety is very important in our studio. As far as COVID, 
we have changed things a lot. As you can imagine, we're all wearing masks the whole time we're in the studio, um, and this includes visitors. It makes it a little tricky to blow glass. If you're wearing a mask, you can't exactly use your mouth to blow. So we've adapted and we've created a device that we affectionately call the Blowmatic device, which uses compressed air to add air pressure to the glass to inflate it. Um, you know, we're wiping down surfaces several times a day, lots of hand sanitizer, and we've spaced out our seats in the demo audience. We've went from about 100 seats to 25. So if you'd like to know more about the Perry Glass Studio, start at Chrysler.org. All the information's on there about the demonstrations and the classes. I highly recommend if it's your first visit, come to a demo. They're free, very informative, um, and great for kids of all ages. We have really youngsters, two and three year olds, that you'd be amazed. They, they get mesmerized and they'll watch the demo as well. And then if it looks interesting, maybe sign up for a class and try it out yourself. Maybe, who knows, it could be a new hobby for you.